Renaissance movement is was um, in Italy, 14th century, um, when artists realized if I'm going to make what my subject matter is believable to the viewer, to the masses, to the constituents, to the neighborhood, whatever, it has to be painted in a realistic manner. So they started incorporating what most of us don't like, as in myself, and that is math. Um, a lot of geometry, a lot of dividing um, the flat surface in order to make it manageable to create a three-dimensional image on a two-dimensional surface. So you all, we, we did that exercise, right? We, we, we drew a square the size of our hand, and then we drew the triangles, the different colors, and we put the spoke wheel in the middle, that single vanishing point, and then we drew the lines out, we made the walls, the ceiling, the back window, and we had one point in your perspective. Does everyone remember that? Well, some of the artists, that is what they first came up with, was one point in your perspective. Then they started doing two vanishing points. So you could take a, a box, make a box, make a square on a, the center of your paper, and now you've got two vanishing points coming off in that box, those imaginary lines. And all it does is it helps the artist organize. So if you've got your foreground, your middle ground, and your background, and you want to make it realistic on a large wall, how are you going to do that and make everything look real, look to scale, and all match each other? So you do that with lines, okay? So there's a lot of underpainting that goes, that gets done first in order to make it manageable and the artist can contain everything and knows that this figure, the feet are here, the head is here, but if I want to make one look like they're further away, we're going to diminish in size, all of that, right? Well, Leon, Leon's from the Netherlands, and Remember, our artists are going to, when they're painting, they are going to, whatever it is that they are passionate about, that's what they are going to project. So Case, passionate about social issues. Lauren, passionate about self-identity and self-expression. Leon, passionate about history. Leon is the only artist I know that will say, this is Trump boy, 100%. And Trump boy means to fool the eye, and that is his show you all something when, when we're close to finishing with this that's going to, that I love introducing to people. So, perspective. Let's start with perspective. When an artist is creating an image, remember, they're putting us as, as participants in the mural. Where do they position us? Again, that's going to be on what we see. So if we look up, how much of these structures that are here are we looking at? looking straight up we can see the ceiling right we can see two by fours in there right we can see the bottom of the bumper car right so what do you think our perspective is like I want you to look at that vehicle right there this is a cool thing about being in, in Cito rather than just on a screen how much of that front bumper are we looking at from this perspective do we see underneath that front bumper because we're above it right if we were maybe even with it, you can see underneath it, right? But we can see under this bumper. So those are questions, again, ask yourself. How much of this surface am I, is visible to me? That tells you where the artist has placed you. The artist has not only placed you in almost as firm's eye view, but the artist, to make this 100% believable, you have to be out there on the street, light turns red and all these groups of cars stop and take a look at this mural and they are the ones who have to see it absolutely 100% perfect. Not us, but, but them out there. Right. So we see that playing out and look at the windshield. And there's no way I'm going to get a straight line coming down and matching on this wall. I can only do it from one perspective. And 
and he chose to make that one perspective out there. So if you're out there where Corey is, that, wind, that windscreen, that the frame of it lines up perfectly. But when you look at it this way, it's too far in from the from the bolt that's at the bottom. So that's just a little fun fact that that if you're really talking about perspective, that you can only get that information and knowledge from being here in C2 looking at it. Okay? And then again we're picking it up. Um, and we also have all these vanishing points. If you take an imaginary line from each two by four, they will at some point, all of it will end up in one vanishing point on the top. You do the same thing at the bottom, you're gonna have a second vanishing point down there. Trust me, he had these lines coming down. He had his vanishing point all figured out so that he knew once he started putting in the details, it's gonna make sense. Once I make this two by four three-dimensional and start putting the wood grain on it, it's gonna match with the next one over and the next one over that, and it's all gonna make sense. It's gotta be believable. Perspective, look at the left side of the car. We've got these little kind of cubbies that he's created to give us, it's not a flat wall. He's not giving us a flat wall even inside of there. He's adding some more dimension. He's adding some more texture with paint cans in the second cubby. And I don't know if that's a sanding block or bricks in the first cubby, but he's made that look like cement versus wood versus metal. How amazing is that? That is a technique that he has mastered because he has watched and learned from and paid attention to history in, in painting. And he implements all of those techniques. So this, we've got Ketasuro playing out at the corner of that bumper of the hood of the car and then the behind it, the, the headlight, we've got that Ketasuro, which is that hot, 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 light spot and then that blending of the texture going uh, the colors going around it to make it look round it's not going to be effective if you don't have a highlight if you don't have a light source and by the way his light source right up here because this is where the sun would be and so he's making it right there he is taking what is happening in nature and he's implementing it where he can in the artwork so let's go real quick to the story behind this. So Leon is from the Netherlands, and when he is called out to paint, he is creating not one-point perspective, not two-point perspective, not even four-point perspective, but he wants eight-point perspective. That's his goal. He has this technique that he's mastering called anamorphic technique, which comes from photography. When the shutter, does who has an iPhone? So, and who has live on their iPhone? that setting, right? What happens when you scroll through images? Don't they kind of move for a second and then? That is that anamorphic second where the camera lens, the shutter speed is figuring out the aperture and all the light around it. And that moment where it captures the image, that's anamorphic, that's that moment. So he's interested in that. So what he started doing, and he's only maybe two years into this technique, is he's now putting QR codes on his murals. So let's say he has a room with a ceiling fan. He's gonna have a QR code on the mural. You put your phone on that QR code. As you're looking at the mural, you're looking in the phone, that ceiling fan is spinning. He has another one where it's a stack of cups in a cabinet. You get the QR code, you look at it, and you look at the mural, the cups in the phone start moving forward. And he is getting you to move with his artwork. You move out there if you want to see this in perfect form. You move out there. If you want to see that artwork moving, scan that QR code, involve yourself with it. He's taking everything to this next level and it is just fun to watch. Absolutely. So Leon, when he travels, what he does is he loves to um, see what's going on in the city and make that his subject matter. That's his subject matter. So uh, fun fact, they don't have Ubers in the Netherlands. And when artists come here, part of what we give them are Uber tokens so they can get around town. So we give them Airbnb, we give them Uber, like we 
load up their, their Uber apps. Well, he comes here from the Netherlands and he's like, I can't even put the app on my phone. We don't have Uber. Does anyone have a bike? I said, oh, I have my bike. So he took my bike, he rode it around Long Beach, comes back and he goes, man, you guys have a lot of ATM and chase things and trash. And so the subject matter he painted at the museum was an ATM machine on the right, a trash bin on the left, and a coffin in the center. And it was all about capitalism and death. I mean, it was beautiful. Here, he's like, you know, we're outdoors, right over there. You all used the word, it's now the pike. Did you know you used to have a carnival with a Ferris wheel and bumper cars and in the in the 1920s and the turn of the century? And I go, no. He goes, yeah, I was doing research and you did. And they must be somewhere, right? Like, are they are they around somewhere? And I said, I I have no idea. And he goes, well, I'm gonna make a warehouse and we're gonna put a bumper car and it's gonna be under repair. He made this whole story up. And then he wanted to attach it to the period, so he gives it a ticket. That ticket booth is a 1920s style ticket. Then he said, well, if there's somebody in the ticket booth, then they need to have air, so then he put the best. And it's another opportunity for us to go up against that wall and like look up the vent, right? He has made everything appear real. And he's created this whole story, this whole narrative. And um, and it's all on the history of the my grandparents lived here. Um, they were working, my grandfather was working on ships, uh, building ships. And uh, yeah, the pike was going strong. It was paradise down there. It was like Coney Island. Uh -huh. And then they came back from my college graduation. My grandma, my grandpa passed, but my grandma came and they were looking for the pike. Even the, the you know, the mini mall version of it wasn't was there yet. Someone said, oh, the pike is long gone. Someone said what? The pike is long gone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's called the pike now. It's just not what it was. Yeah. Now it's a comedy store and a mall and H&M and theater. 